<laughs> well, then I'll start by saying... Go ahead. Go hey, ahead. everybody. Welcome back to another amazing episode of the Fast Charging Podcast with B&B. I am Brian. I'm the bear. And we're coming to you live simulcast from the two best channels ish on the uh, holes of YouTube's Bears Workshop and My Tesla Live, the second channel for My Tesla Weekend. And welcome back, everybody. It's been a long week missing all of you, all the thousands and thousands of people that tune in for the show. I don't know how they keep the bandwidth going with how many people are watching this. Yeah, but, they're going to start billing us at some point. <clears throat> oh, absolutely. I, I couldn't see how that couldn't happen. Mm-hmm, mm-hmm. Mm -hmm. So we should just get into it. Do you know there's an electric Porsche Boxster prototype, which reveals the charging port, and it's got a frunk. That's awesome that it has a frunk, unlike uh, so many other cars that miss the boat on that. Very strange that Kia can't figure out how to fit more than a sandwich under the hood. Mm, I don't think a sandwich would fit. At least not like a, a New York hoagie. Absolutely not. Mm. Uh, yeah, the, uh, the Nero... I've looked under recently, the EV6 recently, and uh, I know about the Ionic 5. There's uh, there's no room, no room for a frunk, not at all. Yeah, it's uh, missing the boat, I think, is, is the absolute correct take on it, because what are you doing, you know? Well, apparently they don't know where to put all the equipment that you have to have in there for an EV. Because it is loaded full of stuff. Loaded. Yeah. Yeah. And, it, well, you know, a lot of people don't don't use frunks. Well, they certainly don't use yours. If you make it so it can't be used, then they're not going to use it. And uh, when we went from Austin down to Brownsville, there was four of us in a Model Y. And all of us had all of our luggage. And I, I had my bag and a backpack. Uh and Brian Goff brought all of his production gear. So we had a lot of stuff. And Ed was with us. He had all his photography gear. We had a lot of stuff. And four grown big dudes. And we fit in a Model Y comfortably. Yeah. And I, I agree with that. You know, my Model Y is uh, spacious. I mean, it's not the most spacious thing in the world, but it's it's definitely adequate. And the front is decent size. Um. You know what? Even even the Corvettes, the new Corvettes, have a frunk, and they're st they're still gas powered, and they have a frunk. Yeah, so somebody's missing the boat. You know, Mercedes has got a a new CLA to rival the Model Three from 2025, and unlike other Model Three rivals that borrow inspiration from Tesla, this grill look familiar. Yeah, yeah. It looks like, looks like a Y. It looks like a Mach E. It looks like a lot of things. Um, but I, I'm sorry. Did you say this is this is gonna match the Model Three in 2025? Uh huh. Okay. Uh, so what do you think that the Model Three will look like in 2025? <clears throat> oh, so you're telling me that benchmarking on a car that's five to eight years old might not be the best idea? Probably not. Probably not, yeah. And do you think this will be under 40,000? No. No. 40,000 what? 40,000 what? Yeah, it's... Okay, I mean, what, well, it's got 800-volt architecture, can charge up to 350 kilowatts. Did they say it's going to be under 40,000? Well, no, but if you're targeting the Model 3, you kind of need to be. True, true. Because I don't think a, a gas CLA is under 40,000. No. Scroll down and look at the silver prototype they're showing. That's pretty. I know that's a Hertz ad. Sorry. <laughs> um, oh, geez. That's not a CLA, though, is it? No. No, and it's also a car that you'll never get. That looks to me like a Mercedes Fisker. <laughs> look who had a baby. Yeah. So, yeah, it'll be <laughs> the industry-wide shift to volume means Mercedes won't ditch the small car. I mean, that's great. The EQE SUV will be upwards of 90,000 pounds. Or euros? Oh, that's In a, weight? No, that's a pound. In, yeah, in maybe. Weight. Maybe. 
Well, that's going to challenge the Hummer. Uh huh. Yeah, it'll be about the same in weight. Uh, any other new EVs coming out? Yes, yes, yes. It looks like the EV9, which is going to be the tel- Telluride, uh, is uh, the range was announced 336 miles of range, but that is WLTP. But I'll tell you, the Telluride is pretty much a full size SUV. So if they're getting 300 on a full size SUV, uh, I mean, that's not bad. It's three rows of seating, of real seating, not Model Y third row. Right. It's a 76 kilowatt hour battery pack. That should tell you what you need to know about the range. Yeah. It's probably going to be low 200s for something that size. That is pretty small for that size. You'd think that they would have enough room. If you they can have put enough a hun- room, it's cost and weight, I think that's the issue, and supply. So just trying to make it a little incompetent, then. just because yeah. you, be, just because of cost. What is the cost? Is, have they put that out yet? EV nine. Yeah. Mm-mm. Mm. Uh, no, but I assume it'll be competitive. Everyone is willing to lose money on their EVs to remain cost competitive, with the leader, Mary Barra. Mary Barra. You know who's not willing to lose money on EVs? No, who? The dealers. Oh, boy. That's, you know, it's fun because Ford is losing $20,000 for every EV they sell. Meanwhile, the dealers are marking them up $10,000, 15000 That's yeah. half of the loss right there. Yeah. It, it is kind of strange the way that kind of works, doesn't yeah. it? Yeah. Yeah. Well... So this uh, other Kia link you sent over has a really neat render on it. I love it. Uh, you, know what it you know what it reminds me of is those four-wheel AMCs they had in the 80s where they just decided every vehicle is a four-wheel drive off-roader, even our little even our little cars. Do you remember those? Yeah, I, yeah, I do remember those, but this is actually much cuter than that. Much cuter. Much cuter. Yeah, but uh, I, I thought it was just funny. I, I picked this article because... Of the, uh, it's got carpets made of recycled fishing nets. Do you think they still smell like fish? Mm-hmm. Yeah, I think that's a, a selling feature for I, many I, buyers. Because it would be for me. <clears throat> hmm You walk, you sit down, and he's like, I feel like I'm in a strip joint. You know? Yeah, it's a real fishy wagon. Yep, yep. That's very classy of us. Yeah, wasn't it? I think so. What do we and, have to uh, lose? So speaking of Ford losing billions, they've decided, you know what? We should be thought of as a startup. All those years we kept saying, any day now we can just flip a switch and become the new guys. Well, it turns out that wasn't the case. They're losing billions a year, but the good news is next year they plan to lose even more. But someday we'll become profitable. Maybe in 2026. I just got an ad popped up, and it won't shut up. Oh, that's great. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. Mm-hmm. I noticed on your chat, Deep said, I shorted Ford today. <laughs> I can't blame you. I don't engage in derivatives and options. I consider that too risky for my tastes. But yeah, it's... Ooh... Yeah, last year, the pre-tax profit for Model E was minus 40%. Get to a positive 8%. The company needs economies of scale spread across more vehicles sold to be worth 20 points of the improvement. Yeah, it's going to be real tough, you guys. These price wars are dangerous. I once said that uh, I believed the reason the Cybertruck was announced at 39000 was to trick the competition into coming out with theirs first and losing boatloads of money. Because a full-size truck in EV for $39,000, no matter who makes it, that's going to be tough. And and especially, we're talking, that's the pre-inflation dollars. Yeah. I don't don't think Tesla really needed to trick anybody into losing money. I think they were going to do that all on their own. Um, And I don't think Tesla looks at these other companies... As like a direct competition, they know that they can be in the future, but they are certainly are not now. Um, 
Ford's making a decent truck. Uh, the Silverado, I mean, that looks kind of awesome as long as they don't do what Dodge did and take a real truck or a really cool truck and make it into um, wet oh, trash. See. I was going to say pile of shit. Um, okay. Yeah. Well, you know, Dodge really screwed the pooch on that one. Uh, they've got so many trucks sitting on their lot right now. I don't know why they think everybody wants that same design at this point. Why spend the time, the money, and introduction of making something that actually looked pretty freaking awesome and then turn yes. it into what they did? Um, yeah. yeah, I think the Silverado will do decent. The, the Lightning, um, I think they do need to change it a little bit more to set it apart uh, as an electric vehicle um, because it is so similar to a regular F-150. That and that is their plan. Yeah. That is their plan is they do have a a from the ground up design coming. I was going to say just a ground up design, but it probably is going to be ground up a bit. They uh, hopefully will. I Without going the cyber approach, I'm not sure how you reduce the weight. But hey, man, whatever. Uh, I guess they know what they're doing, maybe. Uh, yeah, I'm not saying I know what they're doing. Or I would know what I was doing if I was doing what they're doing. But still, it does make you scratch your head. Mm -hmm. John said, well, you, you buy the truck, but there's a monthly charge for the seats. That's one way to make a profit. Yeah, you could do that. That's a good uh, idea. BMW and Mercedes style? Yeah, yeah, yeah. You want that heated uh, steering wheel? Here's a subscription to it. So dumb. Do you know that the uh, Ford F-150 Lightning recall reveals cause? It's the battery fire. And what was it? It wasn't a hamster, was it? Well, you know, it, there's, there's aluminum tabs may contact the anode, causing an internal short circuit. Oh, really? Yeah, production process deviations at the supplier could cause it to short circuit. I mean, is that news? I mean, if you ask me to guess what it was... That was my guess, is manufacturing yeah. process caused short circuit. Uh, yeah. my, my guess and your guess were, like, totally different. Wow. What was yours? It was a hamster. Mm. Didn't I just say that? I thought there might have been an actual answer in there, oh. but I like yours better. I think yours is more accurate. Well, I, I'm just saying because I lost a hamster, so I thought maybe. Oh. I have some... Ideas where you can look, but I'll tell you after the show ends. Okay, I hope there's a diagram involved. Oh, dear. Do you know uh, you, new U.S. electric car sales are expected to be 65% of the total by 2030 and 85% by 2035? What do you think of that? I would, I would like to think about that, but um, I got an ad blocker thing. Oh, good. Let me see Based if I can get on, past that. Based on quicker than expected moves to electric, a leading data provider, a leading provider of data and analytics to the energy industry says 65% by 2030, 85% by 2035. Yeah, it'll displace 2.7 million barrels of oil a day by 2030. Is this for the barrels. is this for the world or No, I believe this is just for the US market. Okay. Yeah. It, worldwide, I think it's going to be even more got a video coming up about uh i encountered this very very hostile individual on twitter who had no enough way. followers who had enough followers that i was like all right i'll engage your crazy crazy pants and she was saying i will never never buy an ev and i said unless they take your license away you will she said no because i don't live in stupid california oh dear well there's seven states that have already put their 2035 bans in place more are expected to follow but think about the rest of the world. Everybody's got bans by 2035, 2030 to 2040. Even India's going all electric by 2040. All these countries are the places that they design and build cars. They're not going to... It's going to get harder and harder to find new gas cars. And what you'll be buying in 2040 is a, is a 2025 model that just hasn't been updated. They're just still building it. And honestly, when um, when there's uh, such a low demand for for gasoline, you think the prices are gonna go up or down? 
economies of scale work in both directions. Yes. So not only are you going to get, are they going to stop developing new technology for your internal combustion car, the parts for it are going to get more expensive. Your ability to get replacements are going to get more. The engines that we used to have to buy to give you your warranty replacement will get tough because that company's out of business. Mm -hmm. So it'll be interesting to see. Yeah, and, and I'm sure that the price of gasoline is going to uh, skyrocket. With, it, it very well may. Because at, at one point, you know, the, the demand is going to start to drop and the uh, prices will, will start to drop with it. But at some point, when the demand gets so low, the prices are going to end up going back up because they're going to stop pulling oil out of the ground. A lot of these companies are going to stop and there's going to be less of a supply because they are going I, to transition to other forms of energy. And I think, they'll, I think they'll just decide what the price is and keep it at that price, regardless of what it, you know, regardless of, of how low their costs get, whatever they can, whatever people are willing to pay for it is what it will cost. Because we've seen a real detachment between the price at the pump and the price of a barrel over the last few years. And when there's overproduction, they just shut down refineries to create artificial scarcity to keep the price high because that's mm -hmm. where they like selling it. Yeah. And I, I have noticed over the last couple of weeks, gas prices have shot back up about a dollar. Mm. So at least here in Arizona. So, you know, I'm pretty excited about that. Of course. Lo I'd be I super jazzed. I am. I love paying more for the same thing, like 25% more. Mm -hmm, in, mm -hmm. in a month. Totally. I think that's cool. It's it's, it's exciting. Uh, so this is kind of a long one. We won't go into it too much, but how long do electric car batteries last? I made a whole video about this last week. The big takeaway is degradation's not linear. As anyone who's owned an EV knows, you get uh, a big chunk of your degradation in the first six months. Then it kind of flattens out, kind of, forever. And this article, it's going to be linked in the description after the show ends, but there's so many great uh, charts in it that show uh, how, how many of them are, have had to be replaced, how many are still in cars. And the reality is they last pretty darn well. So they, they last longer than the batteries in my smoke detector, right? Is that what you're saying? They definitely last longer than that. And for those who don't know, we uh, had Bear dissect one live on a show a couple of weeks back. That was that's, fascinating. That's what we did. Yeah. We took apart a nine volt battery live. Live. I thought live. it was, I thought it was going to blow up on me or something because I heard <laughs> batteries are really flammable. Yeah. And they just spontaneously combust. Mm -hmm. Unlike gasoline. Which is so safe and not flammable at all. Yes. So yeah, we look at these charts lower down the page and anyone who's owned an electric car already knows this. Different cars perform differently, but even the poorest performing on the list perform pretty well uh, versus, you know, when you buy a, an internal combustion engine, you will lose range over time. Your gas mileage is not likely to improve. It's likely to get worse over time as the vehicle wears and, uh, yeah, and death of a internal combustion engine is not linear. It it happens sometimes rather all at once. And yeah. you can say, well, yeah, but it's cheaper to replace, you know, uh, internals on a on an engine than it is to replace a whole battery. Okay, great. But if the once the labor cost hits a certain point, the car is scrapped. It doesn't matter if it's a five thousand repair or a twenty thousand repair. If the car is worth six thousand, you're not doing it. Right. You know what's interesting on this EV battery replacement? Yes. It says that uh, one point five percent of of batteries had to be replaced, but that's a little bit misleading, because on the Chevy Bolt, which has a decent percentage of cars on here, uh, like all those batteries had to be replaced. Because of the well, fire risk. So I just looked up 1.5 and it says outside of big recalls like the Chevy Bolt. Oh, uh, okay. All right. Yeah. So you are correct. Which is great. I mean, it had to happen eventually. Yeah. Uh, so, so CATL, 
claims battery materials break through without solid state. I saw a tweet about this, uh, and I had to do some digging to find it, but apparently they are saying that uh, solid state remains on the horizon and not, it, it remains over the horizon. Zhang said, the company struggles to come up with a solid state battery that is feasible and competitive, a technology that's being researched by the biggest guys, Toyota, Volkswagen, CATL, which supplies uh, include Tesla, Volkswagen, BMW, and Ford. It's the world's largest battery maker, producing more than a third of the sales of batteries for BEVs worldwide. So they're saying, we're still not there. And we've seen a number of companies think they could hinge their success on, on a solid state. I know Dyson assumed it would happen. I've read reports that Apple believed it would happen before they get a car made. And at the rate they're going, it might. Uh, There's a lot of things that might happen before Apple puts out a car. Heat death of the universe is on that list. Yeah. yeah, that's, And it's not even true. at the bottom. Well, will, the, will the metaverse survive the end of the universe? Oh, you mean Animal Crossing with a headset? Yeah. <laughs> yeah. It's innovative. We just we just don't understand, Bear. <laughs> we're, we're too old. Yeah. Toyota claimed they completed solid state 10 years ago, says Steve. Maybe they did, but in a way that can't leave the lab, which is tricky. Daniel says semi-solid only needs a blue pill. Where does a battery get blue pills? <laughs> yeah. So fun times, fun times. Yeah, that, that's oh. that's interesting. So um, hard times here in uh, in Arizona. Yeah, uh, why is that? Uh, the Electromechanica halts production of the three-wheeled solo vehicle that they were making out here in Mesa, Arizona. Not five miles from where I sit right now. They built their factory. They used it for a couple months, and they said, ah. When I first saw this, I thought this meant that the company was closing down. But no, what it means is that they can't make these cars in a profitable way with the way that they are uh, and apparently don't have the demand. But I know that there's a lot of people out there who still want them. So they're going to sell their remaining cars. It's like eight or nine hundred cars. And they are going to focus on four wheeled vehicles. And that means we are looking at another couple of years before they start making anything. Anything worth It's buying. unfortunate. Yes. The 800, 900, that's how many they have made that they can't sell. To I, me, the problem yeah, yeah, is that it's a one-seater. I will not buy a one-seater, not even for fun weekend runaround. I'd still want the Polaris Slingshot or the, uh, what's the other one you have? The Vanderhall, Venice. Vanderhall. It's so cool looking. This is just me by myself. Yeah. I'm all alone. At no least I'd have an excuse. Beside me. Yeah. Um, Every yeah. show I've been to had a Electromechanica solo exhibit where they had ride and drives where you could go around the block and they had dozens of them available and people were riding them all day and it just didn't translate into sales. No, it did. They do have reservations that I think they're going to be able to fill uh, with these extra 900 or so. And once they do that, they're just done with it. They're, they've just realized that they're not making a profit on them. Uh, they definitely have a place. Uh, the U.S. may not be the place for it. Um, that maybe it would do better in China. And they were, they were having them built in China. And then uh, those got a recall recently, which I think that there might be issues getting those fixed. So they're just uh, apparently ready to move on. And go with their Project 4, is what yeah. they're calling their new four-wheeled electric vehicle. Yeah. I hope, they, I, I hope they survive. I hope they survive. The Solo seemed to be remarkably uh, competent for what it is. Mm -hmm. but, but if you can't sell them profitably and people don't want them, you got a problem. Uh, David points out, even a motorcycle holds two people. Well, that's true. I suppose you could do, you could, no, you can't, uh, you know, if you have someone sit on your lap. No, no. I mean, I, I, I drove one. You, mm. Yeah, there's, 
there's nothing nothing that can be done besides uh some straps and the roof and i have a feeling that's going to be deemed inappropriate probably not the safest uh-huh and uh our last big story of the week aptera secures first fleet order for 101 solar EVs with intentions for 100,000 more in the future. Hmm. And is answer that a the re- question in the pre Is that a chat. render? Yes, it is definitely a render. They have not uh, made that many. I didn't think that they have. No. No. It's... Uh, I don't doubt that this order is helpful and important. But to me, it doesn't mean anything. The question is, can you get to volume production profitably? Because if you can't, it doesn't matter how many you build, you're just losing money. And if you can, uh, this order is going to, yeah, this 100 order is going to look silly because the 100,000 order would absolutely be right behind it if the price is as low as they think it will be. Mm -hmm. So, and I'm excited for Aptera. Aptera's got some of the most passionate, passionate fans I've ever seen. But... Um, none of that matters until we can get to production. Yeah, I still think they look like a horseshoe crab. Just black oh, out those windows cool. and put a, yeah. put a spiky see, tail on it. I don't see anything wrong with that. Horseshoe crabs yeah. are, are scary. Yeah. And these are, when you see them in person, man, they're cool. Yeah. They're bigger a real, than, yeah. Bigger than they steal like the you show. think? Yes, they have way more cargo space than like an like solo a, a, well then a lot then you would think uh somebody in the chat might throw down the uh cubic feet of of cargo but you got to consider the miata was a two-seater it had no cargo space and it was extremely popular this is way more eye-catching a bit more fun even if the wind isn't in your hair but it uh it's just really eye-catching so yeah, uh, Jeff says more like a pterodactyl head. Oh, and Digital Blade Canada points out because of the length of the cargo space, you can sleep in it. Really? You can camp? Yeah, you can camp in it. Put your feet at the back because that whole back section is a big flat area. Hmm. Nice. Nice. Yeah. Definitely wouldn't want to bring a black light in there after that. You know, we were talking about that earlier. Oh, I would. Oh, I definitely oh. would bring a black light in. Look, it's a Van Gogh. Yeah. <laughs> More of a Jackson Pollock, but all right. I understand your point. Yeah, yeah. Uh-huh. Any questions right. for us? Because we are doing the 30-minute version today. Tomorrow, we are going to be talking. There were some comments in your chat about Lucid. And tomorrow, we're doing a whole show about Lucid. And can it survive? Is it doomed? Poor yes, that's, that show will be airing tomorrow at whatever time that we uh, randomly pick. Which yeah. We'll decide later. Yeah. I think we did noon last time, but it doesn't matter. Oh, MD Hofsey says, I'm slacking again. Yeah, but, you know, hey, man, I gotta gotta do what I gotta do. And the reason we're not doing the 60-minute versions is because uh, we're trying to do some different stuff. A lot of people will not watch a 60-minute show on a replay. And uh, we've, I've only got 40 viewers. So it's, uh, you know. Uh, That's it, man. I'm, I'm kicking your butt. I got 22, which is like three times 40. Mm-hmm. Mm-hmm. Yeah, that's some uh that's some GM and Ford math right there. That's that's where yeah. I learned it. That's funny I, that you mentioned yeah. that. Hiking Lang says, spoiler, Lucid's doomed. <laughs> uh, no, 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 really, watch to the end. <laughs> <laughs> you won't believe number seven. Yeah. <laughs> uh Mark on your channel said SpaceX launched tomorrow. Yeah, they're doing a few of those. The other day they launched t- Two within four hours and 12 minutes of each other and three over three days all successfully yeah, and i think if if they had more launch pads they could probably break their record i think if they had and they would also need more uh barges on which to land them to catch them yeah well mm-hmm. but that's easy yeah i'll catch they, one yeah well they do have access to two different pads at uh, space at Kennedy Space Center. Yes, and then they slick, have... slick forty, and I don't remember the other one next to it. Yeah, I I don't know either. But then they have uh, the one at Vandenberg, which sometimes right. I get to see the oh, wow. exhaust plume of that. Neat. They are. Uh, 
That's it is the really neat. Launches. Yeah. Yeah. Oh, thir- yeah. So it's 39A and and 40. Mm-hmm. I believe. Yeah, it's something like 80% of all payload to orbit this year will have been delivered by SpaceX. And Blue Origin still can't get to orbit. With their flying penis? The penis was never meant to go to orbit. They've got a uh, a much more slender wang for, I know. <laughs> for orbital purposes. Yeah, yeah they're going to call that one Ron Jeremy, I believe. Oh, dear. Well, hopefully it doesn't uh, suffer the same downfall. as the That's true. <laughs> or whoever that might be, who I've, whom I've never heard of. <laughs> that I'm hedgehog. Quite wow. Quite innocent. I've never heard of that reference before. Oh, and I'm not going to look oh. it up either. Oh, you should not look it up. It's <laughs> terrible. All right. Well, uh, let us know in the comments. What do we miss? What do we misunderstand? We had a great well, show. I, you us. know what we missed? We missed uh, oh, thanking yeah. our Patreons. Oh, yeah. Thanks. Guys. Thank you, Patreons. I put that up. How, how dare I? The nerve. Mine's a little out of date. I got to add uh, four, three or four onto this page. I have thanked them directly, but I want to uh, get them on the list. So very cool stuff. Thanks, to everybody, for hanging out. And we'll see you tomorrow, I don't know, at whatever time we put that video up. About yeah, whatever Lucy. time's good for us. All right. Yeah. Well, thanks for watching. Bye-bye. We'll see you guys.